Hi, and welcome to another episode of the FYE podcast. My name is Danielle Duran, and joining me today are Vanessa Mora, Alan Morales, Aldo Gonzalez, Maria de Anda. And today we have a special guest, and here she is today. I'm Jacqueline Donez. <laughs> and so on this episode of the podcast, we'll be discussing um, study abroad. So our host over here, Maria, has studied abroad before, and so is our, so has our special guest. So today they'll be telling us about that. And so well, my first question to you two is, what is study abroad? So for me, studying abroad is the privilege of going somewhere outside of the United States um, and just seeing different cultures, the way people live, the way, in our case, we, we went to the same program. It was families and disabilities in the UK. So it was the way the families and the people cope to disabilities, um, not only physical, but also mental and like autism, uh, addictions and you can see the way they correlate and the differences between the United States and Scotland. Yeah, um, it's also an experience of going out of your like comfort zone, experiencing, meeting new people, experiencing new forms of, like, like she said, cultures in other places. Well, the thing that, well, the question that we have for you is that um, was it hard to make the choice to go study abroad? Like, when you first heard of it, you wanted to go, or you were kind of iffy a little? For me, I knew I wanted to go, and since I actually found out about study abroad from the UTRGV Snapchat, they posted on the thing that they were having a study abroad club, they posted on the story a study abroad club meeting, so I just showed up for, to see what it was. I kind of knew what it was, but I didn't know what it entailed. So I went to the meeting and they said, we have these programs and they passed out a bunch of flyers and it was a bunch of information, but I was just like, I'm going. So <laughs> from there it was just, you know, Hispanic moms and <laughs> I just had to mold her to the idea that I was leaving for a month and it eventually came to a yes. It is hard time. Yeah, <laughs> and I know you mentioned that that you have to like leave your comfort zone to go to like another country and sometimes it's your parents that have to get out of that comfort zone yes. letting you go can you guys tell us like a bit about like your experience like in a whole new country because like some of us haven't even left the country besides like maybe or even the valley yeah <laughs> even the valley so could you tell us about your experiences over there okay well for me um i've never left well besides she mexico I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> like outside like another country so like like, throughout the process of study abroad, like, for me, it was mostly, like, maybe I'll do it, maybe I'll not. Like, my parents even thought, like, nah, like, she'll leave it, like, halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, like, they saw that I was committed, that I signed up, that I did all of this, lived for money, applied for, like, for scholarships, like, they're like, okay, like, we have to keep an open mind. And, like, especially my dad, because I'm his only girl. <laughs> so, like, but over there, it felt... Nice. I mean, I felt safe. Like, I didn't feel like I was, like, across the, the pond yeah. or anything. It felt like you were across, like, for, in a park or something, uh -huh, like, like, across the street from your house. It didn't feel like that culture shock, that, like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I feel so out of place. Like, I I honestly did miss my house. Like, I was like, oh, it'll be, like, nothing. You know, I'll get over it, I'll, whatever. No, it took me forever to, like, carry on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How was the treatment over there in the UK? From the people? Yeah, from the people. Uh, they were lovely. They were super nice. And if you had, like, obviously you would look different from people <laughs> over there. So they were, like, they noticed that we were tourists. And they would be like, are you guys lost? Or do you guys need help? Because yeah. there's, like, a bus system. We don't have that here. And it's super hard to understand. One time we were on our way to a cat cafe. <laughs> and we accidentally took the wrong bus and ended up at the beach. Oh my so, god, the yeah. side. Like on the other side of town. So it was weird. But yeah, people are lovely and they're super nice. It was really fun. Like, and it, was, it, it felt safe. I mean, it was especially Scotland, like walking. Plus, but the weather was really nice. Especially yeah. from the Texas heat. <laughs> In London, it felt a little bit more like you had to be on your toes. You would hear a car, ambulance, like every five minutes and stuff. But it was. It was different, yeah. London and Scotland. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, so when is a good time to start preparing for study abroad? So I would recommend to start preparing on September. So that's when we, our office, International Programs and Partnerships, delivers the list of the programs that will be available for this next summer and for the upcoming years for, you know, we do short term and long term. So in September, we deliver to the, to the Vaquero community, these are the programs we offer, the program cost, and the professors. So we also, that would be like the right time. So this, we have a, a fair coming up. It's September 5th here in the ballroom in Edinburgh and September 6th in Bronzeville. It is the study abroad fair. So what we do is by that time, we're supposed to have like all of the programs and in that fair, every program gets a table. So students get to walk around and talk to the professors, to, to speak to alumni who have gone for previous years. And the study abroad club will also have a table. The well, there's gonna be a counselor there if anybody wants to speak about like if they have any issues or if they have any questions about studying abroad. Um, there's also gonna be that, and September will be the perfect time. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, start looking at scholarships. I mean, if you work start like saving some money for that um anything helps i mean sometimes looking for sponsors at times um, so what we do at the study abroad club is we offer sponsorship letters so you get admitted into the study abroad club and then you receive a letter saying jacqueline Donians is part of the study abroad club you go to family-owned businesses or big businesses even and you could give them the sponsorship letter and they can donate that money to you and we keep it for you in your account. Then you receive that money whenever a week or two before you leave to your study abroad club. Oh, okay. okay. To your study abroad program, sorry. Who, who can join study abroad? Like? So right now there's a cap of 25 students and as long as you have availability because we do weekly fundraisers, which is selling hot Cheetos, Korean Cup, and the outside the library. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have availability and you know you're going to study abroad, um, then that's pretty much all required. Yeah. Do we have to have a specific major to go to study abroad or any no. major can go? You can go to any, any program with any major. We have, ours was rehab and we had biology majors, we had an English major. Psychology but, major. Yeah, you even, you sign a disclaimer saying, I am aware that this will count towards my degree or it won't. So you go up to your advisor, you, can, you have to schedule, part of the application process is scheduling an, an advising session, and then you sign a disclaimer saying that yes or it doesn't. But you can go to any program. How about preparing yourself like yeah, as a student, like mentally, how are you pre preparing studying abroad? Well, I guess just being aware, okay, I'm doing this, just knowing, okay, I'm going to be somewhere else, I need to be prepared mentally, maybe even physically, depending, like us, Scotland, like we walked a lot. Uh, I, have, <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who went to Peru, like she climbed Machu Picchu, and like, you know, it depends, but like overall, just being sure of yourself that you can do it, like not being afraid of stepping out of your comfort zone. So obviously, like in... Uh, being outside, things are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I hurt my foot and I was just like <laughs> horrible because you have gone through just a bunch of ups and downs type of city. So it's just horrible, but I mean, you manage and you get better. And we also provide health insurance for everybody. Mm -hmm. So if anything happens, health insurance is there and you're covered. And then the Machu Picchu one, it's actually a very cool program. It's in Peru. It's a I don't know how long, but I know you climb Machu Picchu for an entire week and you're um, living amongst the, civ the civilization there. So you are you don't have internet access, you don't have cell phone access, and you're just <laughs> enjoying Peru. But obviously yeah. there's like communication yeah. mm -hmm. over there, like for parents who want to make sure like their kids <laughs> are okay, <laughs> there are forms of communication, just like not bringing your cell phone and stuff like that. Like for us, like we had, we can connect to the internet whenever we want. Like if we found a place, like it was because like, it was a very touristy city, mm -hmm. there was Wi-Fi everywhere. Mm 
Oh, okay. It was good. So it was just connecting and texting my mom like, hey, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. So. That's good. And like, um, what I wanted to ask was, um, in terms of like affordability, I know you guys mentioned there's like fundraisers and scholarships and all this like assistance. Um, do you feel like it's affordable, especially like for some kids that may like be iffy about it? I know it's like a lot of work in order to raise the money. So how would you would you describe it as an affordable thing? Like anybody could do it. It's not a cheap thing, mm -hmm. but it's definitely doable. Mm -hmm. If the person, a student, wants to study abroad two years from now, they have two years to, to fundraise. Um, it's definitely doable. If you put your mindset to it, I come from a low income family. If raised and born in the valley, you know, never been outside the valley and going straight to Scotland. Um, I mean, it's pretty doable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for my family, I mean, I was able to help get help from my grandfather because of like my classes. Mm -hmm. Like I got straight A's. So like that helped me. <laughs> like you know, like it depends on like I also work. I save up like this amount of money, and like it it is. It, yeah, I worked, it's worth it. I was a full time student. And I worked two jobs, and then like my <laughs> yeah, and then my mom, my family, it gave me a lot of financial help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I mean. So in a way, you just have a hard time in the education. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, after the, the rain comes the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good way of, way of putting it. And also, like, in terms of, like, timelines, because I know, like, study abroad has, like, I, from what I'm familiar with, it has, like, different semesters type of deal. Like, you could apply to one in the spring semester as well as the fall and summer. Is that correct? Or how does that work? So we, we offer short term, mm -hmm. which is two to four week programs mm -hmm. and then we offer long term which is a full semester fall and spring and you are eligible to to apply for a, um, a short term which is in the summer is usually summer one summer two or mini master and then you are eligible to apply also for a for a long term obviously you do have to pay everything and attend which is the long term um you have to live abroad for the full sem six months of the semester. And right now we have two sisters uh, who went to Korea for short term in the mini, mini master, I believe. And right now they're leaving next week for South Korea and long term program. Yeah, so they did both in South Korea because they just, I think this is something they have been planning since they were juniors in high school. So they were preparing for it, but it's it it can happen yeah okay that's good to know yeah. <laughs> so if you want to take a little mini vacation study abroad thing that would be yeah. something you guys would recommend definitely and in terms of like uh, being beneficial to students because I know do you guys take course the classes over there yes and how would you say that helps you as a student in terms of like either building resume or just you as a student general. Well, I mean, it was it was a great experience, especially because, I mean, we did go to class, class, we went to presentations <laughs> and stuff, and, like, um, it, it wasn't, like, the whole, like, oh, like, you have to, like, go to class, take notes, no, like, it was actually a fun experience, like, we were able to go around the city walking, because Scotland was pretty much a good place to walk, um, we saw everything, they explained, like, throughout like the course about like families and disabilities, we had already known about several projects, presentations, so we were able to look beyond like for like uh, disabilities, like in places, like we would go to museums, um, restaurants, um, the bus, even the taxis, like how it's adjustable to people with disabilities. So it was a great experience. Like it's like have like in high school having class outside that different perspective mm -hmm. like that and in order in the resume 
side. Um, it's an awesome thing to have that international experience. So when you're an employer, you apply for a job, an employer is going to see like this person has an international experience. They studied abroad. I don't know how many times or just that one time. It's something to have on your resume as well. Yeah. It just makes you kind of like stand out and yeah. gives you that experience, so it will probably like help you in the long run. Okay, I feel like that's very good for like our listeners and just like people in general. Yeah. So, so like, not only is it beneficial for like now that you're a student, and I get to say I studied abroad. <laughs> um, it's actually academic and yeah, everything is worthwhile. Just experiencing like a whole new culture yes. really helps you grow as a person. <laughs> yes, it it honestly does. Because me personally, I thought like of being all tough, like I'll make it, and then, <laughs> whatever, like it's okay, I'll be out of the valley, I'm happy. But it was tough, it was tough being outside the valley and away from my family for so long, I had never. So it was tough, but I mean, like she said, we went to a lot of presentations, we met with um, canine partners, which is, they work with training disability dogs. Mm -hmm. So they help blind people, they help people in wheelchairs, and you see, like, we have, we offer those services here in the United States, but it's different, and it's, you see, and compare, and like, yesterday I met with a, with a friend, um, on Monday, sorry, it was a Monday yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, uh, I met with a friend, and then we, I was, we were talking about rehab, because he's a social work major, and we were talking about rehab, and I would compare, like, in contrast, what he would tell me what I would, what I saw over there, and it's just, it's always in the back of your mind, and comparing it, yeah. Cool. Interesting. And how did your parents take it, like, when we take you in the valley, where, like, your family, like, instantly calls you, you take more than 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, my mom? <laughs> My mom is a single mom, so she was she's really been overprotective of me, but she was always calling me at night because of the time difference. It was my two in the morning, her early in the morning, so it's like, oh my god. But she she <laughs> called me a lot, and she when I came back and told her like all of my stories and what I saw, she was like, I'm so proud that you got to experience something that I will never experience. And she was just like saying, I'm proud, I'm proud, I'm proud, and this and that. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so sweet. For me, it was, um, I honestly, I felt like I didn't think of home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would when I had to call. I mean, I, I did miss my parents at points, but like I felt comfortable. I mean, like I knew they would be happy that I wasn't like homesick all the time. And, like, I do remember my mom telling me, like, I'm on the phone, like, she would be like, oh, like, your dad keeps telling me, like, I shouldn't have, like, given her permission, like, I miss her so much. <laughs> and, like, and then I come back, and he hears all my stories, my experiences, how much I grew as a person, uh, felt more independent, felt safe, and, like, assured that if I leave again, I'm going to be okay. And he was proud. I mean, he was okay. He was like, okay, yeah, like, I made a good decision. <laughs> so. And for you guys, like, what was the most cultural shock? Like, something that is not normal to you? Oh, the language. The, the language, language was... In Scotland, in London it was more understandable, but in Scotland it was like, they couldn't understand us, we couldn't understand them. It was... Their accents. Yeah, really they had a very thick. strong accent. Yeah. yeah. That was the the weather was really like at times we were cold. Oh, we were cold every day. Really cold. <laughs> yeah, especially and people in shorts and skirts. Like, yeah, I couldn't deal. I was wearing sometimes I would wear like leggings, jeans, and then four jackets, and then like <laughs> because we would always leave like in the morning, like at seven a.m. to eight a.m. So by midday, that's the hottest time of the day. I would take everything. I would just be like carrying everything. <laughs> But yeah, it was the weather was hard to adjust to. Yeah. And then, then we got used to it. And then London yeah. got a little bit hot. London was super hot, yeah. <laughs> you would think London cold? No. Yeah, <laughs> no. So when you guys went to London, it's like, ah, it's just like Texas. Sort of, so, yeah. We were I mean, like so shorts, windy, skirts, yeah. dresses. <laughs> we couldn't do that in Scotland. No. So do you have any advice for fresh upcoming freshmen? My best advice would be be informed. Go to the study abroad 
um, fair, go to our office again, East Stack 3.128. Um, we're available all day. If you want just to come in for an info session, um, advisors are more than happy to do that. The, um, go to our website, all of the programs are there. Go to utrgd.edu. Um, we're on the, the little pictures that come out. Just click on it and it'll take you to our website. Um, just be informed because it's definitely something worthwhile, worth uh, every penny if you want, to, if you choose to go that route. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Like, it was my first year. I, I had the idea of, of like searching into study abroad and like I got the opportunity. I mean, I kept doing everything that I had to, getting informed, joining the club, getting um, sponsors and like. It, it, it is worth it. Like, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very self-accomplished to say we made it. We experienced this. It's very self-fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you guys do it again? Or like, do Definitely. you guys plan to do it somewhere? Yes. Oh, I'm already planning my next one. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. It's, I would def I'm definitely going again. <laughs> would you guys do it? I would want to. Uh, yeah, I would want to. I would love to, but my mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what what location would you guys like to go? Um, Italy. Italy, one hundred percent. Pasta. What? For the pasta. <laughs> oh, we had amazing pasta in Scotland. Oh. Bella, Bella oh. Italia. Bella Italia. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like three of them. There's like everywhere. Um, I want more of a culture shock experience, so I'm mm -hmm. planning South Korea. Oh, that's nice. That yeah. is the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually going to take Italian in the fall. So with uh, <laughs> the director of our office, Alan Earhart, he's uh, teaching Italian this semester. So he's taking it with her. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> okay, I'm already, so I am. 100%. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you girls for sharing about your experiences. Um, just like one last question, I guess I'll ask is like when you're over there, how would you say like what are some tips in terms of like spending or just living in general while you're over there? <laughs> that, that face. <laughs> Don't ask her. I oh think I'm the wrong person to ask for that. percent <laughs> So she'll answer. Okay, for saving up, just like um, cause it depends on the program for us. Our breakfast was provided every day so like just um uh save up uh for there's some markets the one that was called the co-op <laughs> we'd go almost every day <laughs> buy sandwiches uh a jelly peanut butter like snacks that we can have during the day and then like save up our money for like shopping or like dinner at night you know a uh, fruit so what i did most of the time was get in to towards food, <laughs> I did. Um, breakfast was provided, so I would care. I would eat a lot, and then just take like a fruit, uh, fruits with me on my backpack, and then have a mess snack during the day. I would like whenever we like one of those, we would be walking a lot. It would be super hungry during the like at twelve already. So those days, I would like treat myself and okay, go and get something, <laughs> and then sometimes I would just go and have lunch, dinner, and that's it. But other times I would not do lunch, I would just like, I can handle it. <laughs> and go straight to dinner, yeah. Oh. Just one more tip, um, I learned this the hard way. Uh, <laughs> when you're packing, make sure you leave <laughs> space. <laughs> Cause you are gonna shop, like 100% you are gonna shop over there, you're gonna bring back stuff and I swear. It's horrible bringing so heavy. <laughs> yeah, leave, leave enough space. Packing uh -huh. is another issue. Don't overpack. Don't overpack. Don't overpack. But we were we stayed in dorms, so we were allowed to wash. Thankfully, we had a washer so, and dryers provided, so yeah. that helped. Especially like we washed like a few days before leaving to London, and that gave us like time, like oh, to yeah. have there, and then more time to shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely leave stuff to bring back souvenirs because yes. I brought a bunch of souvenirs <laughs> and I barely even had room. Yeah. 
and that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, so overall, just make sure you do your research on the program, make sure you prepare enough for your wherever you're going, yeah. and just like give yourself enough time to handle all that and just be prepared for whatever may come. Yeah. Is essentially what we've learned today. <laughs> <laughs> and well, thank you, girls, for sharing. Oh, it's good that you guys had that experience and especially for like a lot of students here that don't really know about it. So before we like we and can you guys tell us like a little bit more about like how you guys prepared and like the process of applying to um that study abroad program? So actually the process is very easy. All you have to do is go on to our website, it's utrgd.edu forward slash IPP. And then you just go on there to the study abroad tab and it says apply here. You create an account with your student ID, with your student email, and then it goes, it takes you through the process of, you have to choose a program right off the bat. So if you don't know which program to, I would recommend you to come to our office. We're located at ESAC um, Student Academic Center on the third floor, 3.128, and we can give you more information. For every application you do submit, it's a hundred. It's a non-refundable fee of one hundred and twenty-five dollars, and then from that, it's just preparing for. We, there is options like we offer a scholarship off of our office. We offer the study abroad club, which I'm the president of, and then there's also other scholarships like the Gilman Scholarship, um, and we're working on getting more scholarships available for you guys. But for now, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, if you have some money for from yourself, then that's, you can also be used. Thank you for that. And thank you for sharing your experiences with us. And I think it like, comes down all the way to like, timing, yes. saving mm -hmm. up, and just getting ready for the whole experience. But thank you, guys. And this concludes our FRU podcast. Mm -hmm.